for some reason it's like it's either fiction or women's fiction but like why isn't women's fiction just also called fucking fiction so I've moved into my first house and you may notice I'm trying to be less of a hoarder we've we've done the clothes we've done the skincare and now we're doing the books <laughs> the books hi if you're new here i am melanie murphy i love books i love reading them and i love writing them two of the books i will not be parting ways with in this video um are my own books fully functioning human almost and if only my debut novel about parallel lives and uh i also wrote this one during the pandemic and during my first year of motherhood so you can only imagine what goes on in this book figured this was the best place to reveal this cover. It's a book about how people can see the same situation very differently. I originally pitched it to my publisher as The Secret Garden for Adults. It is about two estranged sisters. They get tangled up with the same guy and a very unusual garden project with a bunch of other people dealing with mental health issues. While there will be a pre-order competition on my Instagram, it's um it's very hard to market a physical book when um it will also be on Kindle and uh, audiobook but uh yeah the thing this is why I need I need to do this video so my incredible husband uh bought me a kindle and my equally incredible father uh bought me this amazing kindle cover based on the little book that Sarah has in the movie labyrinth comment a green love heart down below if you are part of team labyrinth fangirl um but yeah so I now can just have all of the books at my fingertips um without taking up all of the space and yeah as I shared recently my husband and I bought an old bungalow that we intend on renovating and there is loads of space admittedly for bookshelves I've always wanted like floor to ceiling bookshelves built-in storage either side of the fireplace you know bookshelves in my office but this isn't even all of my books there's that box over there. There's more in the garage. <laughs> I just thought I'd film myself going through and picking out the books that I love that I really want to keep that like, either that I've read and really want to loan to people that I, I love, that people that are in my life. My husband, years before we were in a relationship when we were just friends, messaged me on Facebook asking if I had a copy of Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. And it was like, <laughs> I think that was how he thought it best to, you know, begin a conversation and it just always stuck with me. I was in a relationship at the time, so I think he was just trying to be like, hello, I'm over here. But yeah, you know, like sharing books is just such a beautiful thing. And yeah, I wanna keep books that I intend on rereading or just books that mean a lot to me because I'm an author and I also do some hashtag influencing work online on Instagram and on here. I do sometimes get sent books, so some of those are in here, but the majority of these are like old. They're about to expose my very random taste in books. It seems to be the thing on booktube to do book on hauls. The thing is I don't ever see myself becoming like a minimalist and just having only the books on hand that I need. Like I know I don't need all these books but every time I bought one of these books I was supporting a writer somewhere. Every time I bought one of these books I was filled with hope and excitement and reading's just always been so important to me. Um, not just because it transports me elsewhere and helps me to escape the heaviness of this world for a little while. My beloved grandmother who passed away when I was just 16, I was just so close to her and she read, you know, a book a day. She lived right around the corner from a library and every weekend when I was a child, we'd walk to the library and rent out books together and then just go back to her little cottage and read them together and it was just so beautiful like some of the books I have are books that I bought when with her actually let me show you <laughs> yeah my love of reading was born so young um this is uh, Grimm's fairy tales like it's such an old copy um and there's just there's no way oh old book smell. There's no way I could part with a book like this. Alice in Wonderland, Black Beauty, Little Women. <gasps> this is smeared in some kind of like melted chocolate from years ago. It's disgusting. <laughs> the puffin treasury of children's stories. I used to just adore pretending to be Matilda while I read this book. Where'd all this come from? A library. The library? You've never set foot in a library. You're only four years old. Six and a half. You're four. Uh, 
Speaking of Matilda, Matilda's there. This isn't a super old copy of Matilda or anything. I bought it again as an adult because I lost my original. I've lost so many books over the years, just moving place to place. I've lived in and rented in so many different places over the years. And yeah, because I never had my own home, like a lot of the time I would just become parted from certain books. Like a lot of the time they just went to charity shops because I didn't have the space really to store them, you know? But I've, I've hung on to ones that I just loved. Like I always loved Everworld. These books by K.A. Applegate. Does anyone remember these? What about Darren Shan? Anything by Darren Shan, I was like, <laughs> He wrote about vampires and his books were just so twisty and just utterly incredible. They made like a really crappy film based on this. As far as I remember, it was crap and it just, they never ended up making the rest. I was really sad because it was nothing like what was in my imagination. I'm obviously going to keep all of my Harry Potters. Um, I was at the midnight openings of all the Harry Potters from like book four onwards is when they were doing the midnight openings. And the actress who played Luna Lovegood was in line with us. We remembered her so well because she was all dressed up and she was at the very front of the line. I think we were like third. And <laughs> yeah, I read the first Harry Potter book when I was, was I like nine? I was about nine anyway. And then I remember... I was in hospital getting my appendix removed and I begged my dad to go and buy me the second book because I was sick and he did. And this is a really old copy with like letters from Harry Potter fans in the back. Like it's just so... Just priceless. But yeah, I, just, I don't know where to, to start really. A beautiful copy of Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I'll admit I'm not really one for classics like I, I do have a few classic novels like I don't know Romeo and Juliet because I studied that in school Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens love the picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde this is about an attractive man Dorian whose image is captured in an enchanted painting that keeps him from aging <laughs> so while he hangs on to his youthful beauty the the painting gradually reveals the ugliness inside it's just so you know I, I've dabbled but I just my attention span's shit because of the internet. Like I, I, I need something lighter. Like I wouldn't, not lighter in terms of like content wise. Like I don't mind something very heavy in emotion and pages can be laced with trauma. That's all good. That's all fine and dandy. But it's, it's just more so the writing style of classics. Just I find a bit tedious sometimes. I was talking to my friend Lena Norms from YouTube the other day about how there's a certain book by a certain someone that I'll never ever make it through i just can't anyway yeah if i invest in like a beautiful cover of a book it's it's because i want it on my shelf like i have a few in this style and um, this is the brothers grim selected tales but like they are just sexual like you know even the loyalist wife would find herself being unfaithful if these beckoned from the bed <sighs> if you've not read perfume you need to read Perfume. This is just unlike anything I've ever read. <laughs> the story follows an orphan in 18th century France who was left to die by his mother and who was born with an incredibly refined sense of smell, which he later discovers shortly before becoming a murderer as he collects human scents after, after killing people. Just a big whip up of death and eroticism and like fantasy and it's... Oh, I actually watched the movie of this with my friend Kaya and she was reading the book at the time and she recommended that I, I go and get it. I'm also gonna be keeping all of my Stephen King books. Um, this is his first book. One that he himself now describes as unreadable. Carries a story of a misfit like high school girl who discovers that she has telekinetic powers. I didn't like that it felt like a novelette that was padded out to make it long enough to be called a novel. It's clunky, but you know, this this is what launched Stephen King into the stratosphere, so um, I can't part ways with any Stephen King books. Here's a real old by Senor Stephen. I might actually remove, I know this is like, you'll probably want to kill me for doing this, but I don't like these jackets on hardbacks a lot of the time and I prefer when the spine is exposed. I just think that looks prettier and it's just, I know it's a bit rotten looking, but it adds to the character. So I'm gonna get rid of this. They're just annoying. Um, but yeah, this is a collection of, of short stories. Now it's probably very foolish of me to recommend this because this is gonna be out, I think around the same time as my next novel, Glass Houses. It's Idol by the queen, that is Louise O'Neill. And you have to read this like, if you're gonna read my book or this, read this. It's so good. It's about the kind of influencer that I've had nightmares about. And like, 
the idea of anyone ever be perceiving me that way or of, of me ever becoming like that and having the kind of internal monologue that this character has she's just something else i gobbled this book in two days and it explores so many things like internet culture parasocial relationships sexual consent and friendship and unrequited love and there's this weird triangle between the protagonist and her friend and then the guy that her friend is now married to but who the protagonist has always had a thing for and it deals with body image and just oh there's just I can't, I'll word vomit and the whole video will end up being about idol, but yeah, this was a proof copy. Are you ready to have your illusions shattered? It's not some big influencer bashing fest, you know, and yeah, like, I wouldn't have expected that from Louise anyway, but it's, it's just really complex and layered and so good. Like I have pretty much all of Louise's books. This is asking for her reimagining of The Little Mermaid. Like look how gorgeous that cover is. This is a proof, but uh, the, the actual cover of this is probably one of the nicest covers I've ever seen in my life. Sorry, back to the little pile. So um, yeah, I read um, The No Show by Beth O'Leary. This was a proof copy as well. And Beth is probably one of my like top top 20 writers. She wrote The Flat Share, The Switch, and um, when I was getting her address to send her a proof copy of Glass Houses, I was telling her that she inspired me to write from two different perspectives in my upcoming novel. So it's written from the perspective of two different sisters who don't get along with each other. And I never would have felt brave enough to attempt that if Beth hadn't come into my life. The no-show is so clever. If you're finding it hard to get back into reading and you want a writer who writes in a way that it's just like you're not it's no effort at all required to read but like really gets you in the feels uh beth o'leary these are the two books i'm currently reading it could never happen here which if you're a parent me thinking you will also enjoy this and also isn't this just the most stunning bookmark you've ever seen in your life Oh my god, every time I'm reading a new physical book, I just get so excited to use this bookmark. But I can only use the bookmark in one book. So I've just started this. I read up to page 58 this morning in the bath during my son's nap. Um, it is by Jonathan Jolie. It's All My Friends Are Invisible. And this is a memoir. My YouTube channel wouldn't exist without Jonathan. Him and his wife Anna were the first two Irish YouTubers I ever followed. And they massively inspired me to start after I went to a meetup with them. And they just made me feel like it was it was attainable for me. They helped me to get over the sensation that it was a weird thing to do <laughs> back when like nobody did it. So far there's been a lot of like 1980s Ireland. There's so many Irishisms in this. I, I'm really enjoying that. Jonathan's been opening up online about his adventure with his um, identity and just his, yeah, his sense of self in this world and trauma from childhood, how that impacted how he behaved, I suppose, as an adult. Um, I'm finding it really interesting so far and I think, yeah, because I have an attachment to him from the internet already, it's like really enhancing my reader experience. Oh, this is one of the best books I've read in years, like one of the best newer books. It's Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. And the twist in this just blew my brains all out. Like it just, it squeezed my heart so much. <laughs> my God. This was everywhere. This was like normal people level. Massive, you know, when it came out. I bought Milkman. It won the Man Booker Prize. Yeah, I think I wanted to read it because I read that it was set in Northern Ireland, but I, I bought this secondhand. I still haven't read that. So I, w I really, really do want to read that though. Another beautiful book that I have to keep. Uh, best loved Yates. This is just a real, you know, sitting on the toilet doing your, <laughs> doing your poo after having a Chinese kind of book. <laughs> uh, One Day by the wonderful Dave Nichols. 20 years, two people. And it is exactly that. It's about the relationship between two people that spanning over a long time. This is a gorgeous book. There's a film based on it. I don't think I've seen the film, um, but this is an amazing book. Somewhere um, in here I have a signed copy of his new book that he sent me, which I still haven't read. I'm sorry, David. The Hobbit, of course, I am keeping. This is just happiness for me. Like, look, and it's such a small, teeny tiny book. It's the kind of book that you imagine a Hobbit holding and the Hobbit's like, look at my big book. For some reason, these aren't together in my pile. They're the Hunger Games books. Of course, I am going to keep them. I'm not doing a very good job at letting things go right now, am I? 
Um, but I'll be keeping all of them once I come across the others. It was Valentine's Day yesterday and uh, this is Out of Love. It's a love story told in reverse and it's written by the lovely Hazel Hayes. My name is actually in this book. Hazel is such a talented storyteller. Like she made, you know, short films and stuff like that on YouTube. So people kind of, her followers knew she was a great writer and she crowdfunded this and then she got the mother of all US book deals for this. So you've probably, seen the other cover of this. If you're a US follower of mine, I highly recommend that. Actually, speaking of YouTubers who publish books, I have a lot of those in a pile here and I'm just gonna like run through these real quick. The amazing book is On Fire by Dan and Phil. This makes me feel really fucking old. I think I was a bit of a fangirl. I know I was a bit of a fangirl back in the day. Like when I met them, I was, like a cat in heat, my God. Baking with Leighton, Sex Plus by Lacey Green. I'll give this away to, you know, like a teenager who will learn from it. Almost Adulting by Arden Rose. This book actually did massively inspire my first book, uh, Fully Functioning Human Almost. Living in an online offline world. But yeah, what I mean by like inspired, like see the way there's like little um, illustrations throughout and stuff. It was like, you know, a proper, book and it's about her. I wanted my book while being about me to be, you know, to look and feel like a proper book and have all little illustrations. That's one of my favorites. I did not want it to be <laughs> like this. Why do I have this? Hello. These typical YouTuber books that like everyone and their granny were publishing at the time. I just, I really, I didn't want to be lumped in with that category. Another actual author who also just happened to be a YouTuber is uh, Connie Glynn. She, uh, I had the biggest crush on her once upon a time. And she wrote to Melanie, I adore you. And she's a whole series of these books and they're so gay and they're so great and I want my children to read them so I am keeping. Lily Singh's book, probably not gonna keep that. Oh, I have the Magpie Society books by uh, Zoe Sugg and Amy who co-wrote them with her. And these are really fun. One of my best friends in the world, Hannah Witten, doing it. This is full of filth. Throwing it in the bin. I'm only joking. And Hannah's The Hormone Diaries. I have a proof copy of The Truth About Keeping Secrets. And this girl, Savannah Brown, is Mwah. five finger chef kiss. So talented. In this book, the protagonist's father dies suddenly and the story explores that kind of experience of like invasive thoughts about dying and death. And it's about desire for belonging. There's lots of mystery and it's it's queer as fuck as well. I have her second book also. Oh, Carrie Hope Fletcher, such, oh, I just love her books. When the Curtain Falls, this isn't her first novel, but um, I have all of Carrie's novels. Like me, she loves that bit of, you know, magic realism and hint of magic, you know, a bit of something, something. Well, we're going way back now. I have Bloom by Estée Lalonde, Navigating Life and Style, Eat Gay Love by one of the best writers I have ever met. I'm not just saying that because he's one of my best friends and he's gonna be a bridesman at my wedding, but um, this man has lived such an intense and interesting life. And he's an incredible writer. He has a book deal with Penguin. He has a book coming out called Ordinary Boy and it's kind of like Freaky Friday, but gay. <laughs> John Green, I've got all of the John Greens. I don't love all of John Green's books. I have them all though. I Should I keep them all? Is that stupid to, to just keep? books that you're like not that mad on but you love the writer. I do love Paper Towns though. Uh, Paper Towns is probably my second favorite after, you know, you know what I'm gonna pick, don't you? Louise Pentland's books, which are much more relevant to me now that I have kids. Stacey Solomon, I was sent that and I've not read that so I won't be keeping. Oh lads, <laughs> love Tanya. <laughs> How old was I? I've got You're Crushing It by Lex Croucher. I'll probably give this away because I think it would be more valuable to um, someone a bit younger than me, but uh, Lex is a great writer. I was never like a massive Grace Heil big nut. I don't know why I have that. I have my friend Riyadh's book and I have my friend Emma Blackery's book. They're staying in the like classics of the era of YouTubers publishing books. If you're a parent, you need this. Hold on to your kids. Gabor Mate is, is the man. Night Circus. This is a one that I bought secondhand. Um, I probably got this for like two two quid. I'd just seen so many booktubers recommend this and I read it across a couple of flights and it's just magical. It's basically about two ancient magicians setting their two best pupils against one another. Very enchanting and whimsical and visual. I love this. King Arthur and the Grail. 
what are you doing in here? <laughs> oh, the Phantom of the Opera. I think my ex possibly bought me this because I was so obsessed with the movie and I used to watch it on a yearly basis. It's, ba it's a shit movie, but it's a shit movie that I love to death. And I can admit that it's, it's a bit shitty, but I love a lot of shitty things. This is not shitty. This is incredible. It's by Juno Dawson. It's called Clean. It's about this like socialite who goes to rehab, like a rehab facility. I got so pulled into this and it touched me and it's staying. A villain. When I bought this it was around the time I was still like super into reading fantasy. And it makes me really sad that I kind of, like there's a lot of fantasy books in here. Um, obviously we've got all the Tolkien's. We've got Robert Jordan's going on. Lots of fantasy speckled throughout my collection, but like I used to just exclusively read fantasy. And then I think it's when my YouTube channel started doing well and, and all that. And I just found myself so constantly focused on like real life stuff. I was just, I was just so in the real world. There was less of a place in my life for, you know, escapism through books and games and stuff. Cause I just, I didn't really have much time, but yeah, like everything was such a wild ride. And anyway, I'm just, yeah, I'm sad that cause I didn't fall out of love with fantasy. It just kind of, I don't know, it stopped being a big priority or a big pillar in my life. Short stories by Jojo Moyes, have not read must read the confidence kit by caroline four and i will pass that on also to a young person who will appreciate it a proof copy of how do you like me now by holly Bourne. i have so many books probably all of holly's books this book is hilarious and very empowering wasn't that mad on an abundance of catherine's by john green so i'll pass will i pass you on spent so much time talking about this in a vlog before so i won't give it too much time but in the event this doesn't fall apart by Shannon Lee Barry is a beautiful book of prose and poems about her love. Oh, I keep meaning to read some Graham Norton. I've just heard that he's just like an incredible writer. Um, and like, you know, Graham Norton, the guy from Father Ted, like handles that guy yeah it means so much to me to see him straddle such different career paths like TV presenter, actor, successful Irish author like it's just amazing that people can like allow him the space to be all these things and wear all these hats because I've had such like choking paranoia that I'll never be seen as anything but a youtuber haven't read I was sent this haven't read I don't like reply to emails being like yes I want to receive this book a lot of these books I'm just like on PR lists and they kind of arrive at the door. Bit of Rupi Kaur, you know, Instagram poetry goddess. I've got this book by one of my best friends that she self-published, We All Fall Down. Sarah started writing this as a teenager and then went back as an adult and finished it. And I was like, just so impressed that she actually like picked up a project that she'd had sitting there for such a long time. Cause you know, I'm sure a lot of you've probably, maybe, maybe not, but like, you know, started a book at some point and then just never, got past like chapter three and it just sits there gathering dust in a drawer. Like how fun would it be to finish it? When All Is Said by Anne Griffin made me sob. <laughs> Do not read unless you have tissues. Girl with a Pearl Earring, I actually saw the film first and then I read this um, and I read this so many years ago. I think I was in college, has that old book smell. Um, actually inspired by a real painting. Um, this is about a young girl called Greet who becomes a maid in the house of this painter and on to attract his attention but they have this like shared understanding of art it, it like it doesn't turn into this kind of typical forbidden love story or anything just a classic but it's incredibly atmospheric some more that i was sent leah on the offbeat i did read some exploration of bisexuality in here haven't read this one the two lives of lydia bird lydia thinks their love is indestructible but she's wrong because on her 27th birthday freddie dies in a car accident oh jesus christ do I keep it? Yeah, that sounds depressing, but I'll read it anyway. <laughs> um, I'm not gonna keep this one, so I'll pass that along. Queenie, I've got like two copies of this. I was gifted one. I remember finishing this and feeling like it was an important book. I want other people to read this. I'm going to ask some of my friends if they've read it and if they would like to read that. I'm a sucker for Dan Brown. Judge me all you like. I just love me some Dan Brown. All of them. I read The Da Vinci Code first and then just... Inferno. <laughs> My northern lights should be somewhere in the pile. Um, but these books by Philip Pullman were massive 
to me and my brother in our childhood like I think after Harry Potter the His Dark Materials series was like the next like series that I was obsessed with when I was younger I always thought you know these are children's books they were, were always in the kids section in the library and stuff but they hold up really well if you reread as an adult they're so well written and there's so much going on in these that I didn't really understand as a kid you know I didn't see parallels with church and, and politics and like a lot of the metaphors just completely went over my head <laughs> oh I forgot to include this in the you know creators who are also authors pile but I, I don't know I'd, I'd consider Jenna an author who is also a creator rather than the other way around but um the Savers champion is phenomenal and uh, this is self-published but she's just done so well like so well something I really appreciate about Jenna she's so big uh, I actually used the name Jenna in as a character in my next book because I just I loved her videos as well at the time. She makes a lot of videos about writing. Um, but she's so big on, you know, non-toxic romances and male characters who aren't just there to be absolute dickheads to women. Like, you know, she's just, uh, check her out. The Tattooist of Outfitch. This is actually Thomas's. I don't know why this is in my pile, but uh, I do want to read that. Everyone talks about that all the time. Got more Ruby Core. The book was put on their pile. <laughs> That's not a dig. More Stephen King, more Tolkien. Remember I was going on about like my fantasy times like Terry Brooks, man. This brings me back. I remember I had a friend in school called Katie and she got me like hooked on all of this kind of stuff. And like we used to just read the books and then talk about the books. Like that was my idea of fun back then. Peter Pan, a gorgeous copy of Peter Pan. Um, I just adore Peter Pan so much. Hook, like Aunt and Peter Pan related, I'm, I'm very obsessed with. We've got some Sally Rooney's on the go. We've got normal people and we have uh, conversations with friends. Um, let me know below, did you love both? Or are you one of those people who like loved one and really didn't like the other? Because I know a lot of people really loved one of these two and just didn't get on with the, the other. I, I'm a big normal people fan. This just had modern classic written all over it, you know, and I'll admit I found the way it's written difficult because it's just not what I'm used to at all. Um, I wouldn't be massive into like literary fiction, you know, it's quite jarring. It's kind of like the way I don't really like I've tried to get on board with the whole thing online of like everything being in lowercase. I don't really get it. Like when people who are like very clearly well-educated and love English and love reading and they use like lowercase i. Like it just, it just fucking, I don't know what it does to me, but I kind of felt, I feel like that when I'm reading this kind of literary style. The ending isn't really what you expect or like want necessarily as the reader but and you're just there like oh. but uh yeah this like I thought I would love this it's about modern relationships and like I don't know I just I just like I don't even know if, I don't even think I finished it I've never read this I don't know where it came from anyone know if this is any good Akin by Emma Dunahue Error Stop by Laura Jane Williams she is just unreal like she writes kind of um romantic comedies in book form and she is so funny sophie white as well is just so funny this is another one of the few classics i have read and that i got on with was uh, dracula um and i think the only reason i really persisted with reading this is because i have just I've, i just love anything and everything to do with vampires and um the movie dracula with gary oldman i always really liked oh wicked wicked this book is so much better than I expected it to be. Um, I went to see Wicked on a date. But yeah, he spent like the whole, <laughs> the whole show watching my reactions. Wicked is set in the land of Oz, like ages before the time of Dorothy, you know, from, from The Wizard of Oz. Wicked is about the life of the Wicked Witch of the West. And it's such an incredible meditation on good and evil. You have to read this yeah, book. There it is, my signed copy of David Nichols' new book. Wim Hof, Activate Your Potential, Transcend Your Limits. Oh God, what a complete Ashling. This is 
an Irish classic at this stage. Um, I only have the first one though. Oh, Nine Perfect Strangers. Oh, I started this on a flight and I remember like I just did not want the plane to land. It was just so absorbing. One luxury retreat in the middle of nowhere. 10 days in which no one can leave. Nine strangers seeking perfection and each discovering the perfect lie. It's so fucking good. This was sent to me, have not read. It's called The Outsider. I think I need to just give away a lot of the books that I was sent that I, I never made time for because the way I'm looking at it is if I didn't make time to read it like very soon after receiving it, it's just, it's probably just not something that's sparking mad excitement in me. Um, like I'd sooner <laughs> sometimes we read like an oldie but a goldie, like Little Women. That's just, that is just the nicest cover that's ever been wrapped around paper. A dirty copy of, uh, Charlotte Bronte's Jane Eyre. Wasn't that mad on this, um, did not finish. I know. Um, Charlie Cox, She Must Be Mad. Uh, lovely little poetry book. Very much a like, women, you know? Oh, this is disgustingly good. Like, it's just annoyingly good. <laughs> a Lick and a Promise by Imelda May. I had this in our car for ages and anytime we were driving to get food shopping and driving back, it was like a 15 minute drive there and 15 minute drive back. Um, And I, yeah, I gobbled this and it's just so good that you'd read it more than once, more than twice, more than three times. Like I read half of it in the bath one day and I just remember climbing out and being like, I feel cleansed. I sent a lot of books by Roisin Meany. Yeah, like Sheila Flanagan, like there's a lot of writers like that that I've been sent copies of their books. I don't know, is it that I have this kind of assumption that they're, you know, for older people, but like I am old now, <laughs> I'm 32. I need to start like expanding my horizons a little bit. And you know, something that I also hate and I know it affects me as well is this kind of presumption that like women write a certain type of fiction and like Marianne Keyes has talked about this a lot like for some reason it's like it's either fiction or women's fiction but like why isn't women's fiction just also called fucking fiction and why is it always just treated like it's fluffy um and they they do market them that way like I'm not saying I hate this cover it's just not the kind of cover that I'd grab I'd gravitate toward this in a shop <laughs> Dan Brown more fucking Dan Brown John Grissom but you know what I mean like even Bridget Jones diary like nowadays I feel like if this came out nowadays the cover would be so different from that um this is like a really old copy of it I love this and I know it's like I definitely don't like it as much as the film and there's a lot of problems with it in terms of like I hated how much of a focus there was on her weight and numbers and things like that like really did I think mess me up a little bit but um it's just oh this was like a building block of of me years ago like kind of like the sex in the city show anyway my point being like I'm sure that this book and like such writers whose books look like this. I'm I'm one of them, like my books are flowery and <laughs> you know, it just gives a certain impression that it's gonna be a certain kind of a read and it happens with Marianne Keyes' books and I, I do find then though that they do, they deal with really heavy subject matters and I just don't know though, how do we like navigate or like, because it's also, it's bad that the thought process is pink and flowery and you know, that that equals fluffy and that fluffy equals bad, like, because there's nothing wrong with those colors. Yeah, I don't know. There's just book marketing and all that. It's just like this whole, whole other conversation. That, that is the kind of cover that I just, I just wanna do this. <laughs> like if I ever publish or self-publish um, prose and poetry and stuff like that, I would, want this cover to be a big time inspiration. Sophie Kinsel, The Party Crasher. I haven't read this yet either. Um, but yeah, again, it's like, you know, these kinds of like pictures of faceless characters and high heels and drinks and like, I know that's just kind of, that is like what sells now and stuff, but yeah, I don't know. I, I think maybe I just, I just love neutral covers and you can do neutral covers with, with flowers. Um, and they still, you know, they, they just look uh, like anyone would be interested, not just women. And I think that's that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> it's like when a book is kind of pushed in a way that's like, oh, you're only gonna really like this if you're a woman of, of the 40 to 50 age bracket. That makes me sad, because I'd say there's a lot of amazing books that I've not read because 
they come across that way. I'm so glad I have this in such good condition still. This is Doom Rolled in Glitter by Lena Norms and it's a zine that she um, put together and uh, she's just an incredible writer and I know she's going to go on to do amazing things and um, she's so talented and she has got a little something something else coming out. You might be surprised to see this uh, here. It's Jordan Peterson, 12 Rules for Life, An Antidote to Chaos and I am going to, well I actually have the audiobook of his um, new book but um, yeah don't agree with everything he says but I just find him fascinating and I find him very interesting to listen to because he's he's just such an intellectual and I like hearing I like hearing him debate with people I like hearing him and other intellectuals like uh, Stephen Fry and like I just I just love listening to really articulate people speaking and um, enjoying Jordan Peterson is not me endorsing everything Jordan Peterson says I will say that now before anyone comes from the secret garden one of my favorites um that's also one of the prettiest book covers that i've ever seen in my damn life oh this makes me sad i bought this when i gave up alcohol a book of reflections by aa members for aa members i'm i'm not in aa i had a bit of an alcohol problem like i i, I wouldn't consider myself an alcoholic i never really felt like that label i don't know fit me i suppose but uh this, this I had in like the bathroom for ages <laughs> and I'd be doing my, I call them, I call, we, me and Thomas call our poos our Lion Kings. Oprah Winfrey, what I know for sure. Oprah is just a goddess, isn't she? I'm keeping. I've got these two TED Talks books because um, I've done a lot of like talks over the years and I went through a phase where like a lot of my income was doing talks and lectures and um, that kind of thing. And I, yeah, I was like super bad at getting up and you know, projecting my voice and, and keeping things interesting and stuff. So I love TED Talks, so I just bought those to try and inspire myself. Can I say no? Haven't read that. Oh, the diary of Anne Frank. Everyone has to read this. This is just such a chunk of history, isn't it? I think I was way too young reading this though. <laughs> like it's, you know, it, it's obviously it's written, you know, while she's in hiding and stuff. But I think just knowing, I, I knew what was going to happen to Anne Frank before I even read the book. And <laughs> It's just, a, it's just a lot, isn't it? More fantasy books. I think these might possibly be my brother's. Did he lend them to me? I can't even remember. Fangs. This is a um, graphic novel, I think, as far as I remember, yeah. Ooh, I don't have many of those. <laughs> the Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, it's so good. There's been a lot of chat about like totalitarianism the past couple of years. And uh, oh, this, this, this book is just... <laughs> It's too relevant. The Kite Runner. This was loaned to me by my friend Lydia and I still haven't read it. I'm so sorry if you're watching. I will, I will Just take my baby away for a while. Caroline Foran, Naked, 10 Truths to Change Your Life. Um, another that I'm gonna pass on, like a lot of the kind of self-helpy books that I have, I just think it's best to pass them on because they're not the kinds of things I tend to reread. Right, forgive me. I don't know where we left off and I probably look absolutely knackered right now, but my um my husband got back with my baby and I had to put him to sleep and feed him and stuff. You may hear cats meowing now in the background, by the way, they're just having a feed. Oh yeah, my, my friend Lucy gave me this book, Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert, I think because she knew that this was one of my favourite books, um, Eat, Pray, Love. You may only know this from the movie with Julia Roberts, but the book is better. It's split into three different parts and it's about a woman who like, she just kind of um, doesn't want to be married anymore. And um, it's kind of like a tale of self discovery, but the whole section that's in Italy, like it just will make you want to just die. Um, and be reborn as an Italian because it's just it's all about like the food and oh it's so good very good lives uh, oh this is like a speech that JK Rowling gave uh, in book form and that was back before um, she was like despised <laughs> fringe benefits of failure and the importance of imagination um, I can't I can't part with that oh now I'm gonna have to fish out that other copy of Dracula and um give that away and keep this one because look at that one. Oh, that is a sexy cover and like silver edges i never read this I, the memory shop has anyone of you read this i bought this thinking like oh i would love that because i loved the keeper of lost things so much and i don't know this just sounded similar this guy leaves his house to his assistant 
and through his life he was collecting lost objects um he's hoping that she can reunite the objects with the owners oh but this is just such a cute little book like and yeah i no i'll keep this i'll keep that and i'll read it how google works what a boring like <laughs> And probably not. Now I got fairly, got onto page 60, what, 61 before I gave up. <laughs> probably not that boring, but it's definitely not tickling my pickle right now. This is a raggedy L copy of Shelley's Poetical Works. I think this might have been my grandmother's. I never called her grandmother. I called her Nana. Um, These are mine. <laughs> I have no shame for my love of the secret and the greatest secret. I know they are silly and riddled with problems and stuff but they just make me feel so good and like anything's possible and like i am in control and helped my anxiety tremendously in my early 20s and i'm keeping them just because they have i don't know what well, the, the secret anyway made quite a profound impact on my life but then when i actually compare this to the greatest secret i actually think this is all this is very so many amazing nuggets of wisdom in in this this book again they're not the kind of thing i'd sit and read in one session but i'd like flick through and enjoy little bits here and there oh the 50 shades books like why these and twilight like you know i i, I don't think i really enjoyed 50 shades it's just it's not even a guilty pleasure it's just a it's just a guilty isn't it twilight though i did i loved twilight when i was younger um i know it's, it's really problematic and um has not aged well probably was never seen in a good light to begin with um but it captured me at like the perfect age I was like what was I 19 20 maybe and yeah it's just pure nostalgia for me like to kill a mockingbird that was on my school syllabus for sure um I actually think this is my copy from yeah look it's written on the side there school novel Melanie Murphy and then it says Emers like Emers was my class name they used to name our classes after like different like different girls names um I had to read this so many times I'm probably never gonna read it again but it's it's so good I can't get rid of that a discovery of witches um I don't think I ever finished this but I remember getting really excited about it when I read the back and I stopped on page 354 sounds like very far in but the the book is like how many pages long it's nearly 600 pages long so um yeah i'll pass that on john green this this probably is my least favorite john green book harry potter and the cursed child i still haven't seen this still have not seen this at the time like pre-pandemic when i would have been like able to go um there was just the tickets were just always sold out uh I really do want to see that one day. If you're on the whole The Secret buzz, uh, Esther and Jerry Hicks <laughs> would recommend. Now, I've been here too long, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make an agreement. We're gonna agree to not get mad at me that I, I can't take you through all the rest of these and then there's there's more. It's not just these, it's just never ending. But a big pile of these here are gardening books that were left by the original owners of our bungalow and um, some other gardening books that I bought when I was writing my novel glass houses because there's like kind of naturey lots of outdoorsy stuff in that and like at the time nature really intrigued me and gardening and all that kind of stuff but I had no experience with it at all it was just like height of lockdown and we were outside a lot and you're hearing all the birds and I don't know just that was all like calling me and anyway i bought um all these like amazing books on gardening and stuff like that, that i never had time to just sit and read through like proper cover to cover because i had a baby and i was writing a book like there was barely time in the day to wipe my arse after a shite so um i do i do really want to you know over my lifetime read all those i'll have loads of time when my babies aren't small to, to read that kind of a book and then i've got loads of cookbooks and stuff like that you know like Jamie Oliver's 30 Minute Meals and Nigella Lawson and Roz Purcell. And then I've got like ridiculous things from my past, like the art of World of Warcraft. <laughs> I used to love World of Warcraft. <laughs> it stole so much of my life, but I forgive it. It was a great, great time. 
it's almost like a lot of the memories I have from within the game were like actually happening. Um, that got me through some big depression. Uh, so I can't get rid of that. I just can't. And then I have this. Um, this was inside this, but this is the Steampunk Users Manual, <laughs> and I bought this because. Uh, so when I first started writing, I would always write like really like high fantasy type stuff, and um, I was on a big steampunk buzz. But I was quite inspired by steampunk, and I wanted to like incorporate a lot of that into this book idea that I had. It was this was supposed to be called Flare, um, and then I just have here like this was me kind of starting a book, opening conflict, character descriptions, like some amount of shite. Like I just I totally forgot about that. So I will probably revisit that one day. That'll be a hoot. Some at the end there are like my dad's random stuff to do with instruments and sciencey stuff. And then there's a big book of pregnancy factoids that I'm gonna keep. Also, I'm not sure where we got this. Maybe from Thomas's grandmother, but they're like all Shakespeare's. I'll end on this uh, magnificent book by um, Johan Harry, New York Times bestseller, Lost Connections, Why You're Depressed and How to Find Hope. Um, it is so good. I actually um, included him in the um, dedication and acknowledgements of Glass Houses, my upcoming novel, and I'm sending him a copy. I was so happy that he like sent me his address. I like proper fangirled because um, there's a story in here, like a real life story, and it's very small, but it, it sparked the whole idea. It was about this doctor who kind of wanted to try something a bit, you know, unorthodox to help people um, who were feeling anxious and depressed and stuff. And um, I gave my sister a copy of this as well, and she like proper read the full book and highlighted stuff and everything. And she's not a big reader, so like, you know, if if you if you are depressed, um, I would definitely recommend this book he covers lots of different things that can cause depression and like some are things that you don't necessarily have um control over like it's just more so about like really understanding how various aspects of life interweave and affect each other and and stuff um but it's so interesting but yeah let me show you then all of the books that i am going to be purging so there's loads so far i really hope this encourages you to go through some of your shite and um pass along or read yourself of some of that shite if you want more book related videos leave a comment and um maybe recommend something that i can read in the future on kindle down below i like my comment sections to be interesting to read for other other people watching the video because if you're acting like me, you do scroll down and like read through other comments. And I'm gonna go and sort out this ridiculous mess. Thumbs up if you enjoyed. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again very soon. Au revoir and a kiss.